science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it, and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. For newcomers and old timers alike, the Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can we prevent illness, see the signs of disease before it's too late? and care for our birds through ill health. What light does behavioral science shed on their nature, needs, and hopes? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shake. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots, let them roam around about you and share a life with them? How much freedom do you give them? What happens if you form a bond of trust with them? Watch and see what understanding their true nature can do for you. Come with us on a journey as we do more than examine a parrot's world. We live in it. Make some popcorn and bring in a few wood blocks. Let everyone have something to chew and a comfortable place to perch. Cockatoot is a presentation of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. I'd like to do a big shout out to those people who make this video cast possible. Cockatude would not be possible without our patrons. And a great big welcome to our newest supporter, Cameron H. Thank you to those of you who make one-time donations. Without these patrons giving us of their hard-earned cash, we couldn't continue doing this podcast. I'd like to urge you to please give us at least a dollar per episode. We do two episodes a month. We'd like to do more, but in order to do that, we have to have the time. And right now I'm spending a lot of time trying to beat the bushes for the Chloe Sanctuary. It's not easy taking care of birds that are severely damaged, both emotionally and physically. So please, I urge you, become one of our patrons. And I'm sure that Peaches would thank all of our patrons in person if she got the chance. We try to answer questions from our viewers as we can. If you are a patron, be sure to email us at patron at chloesanctuary.org and your questions will take precedence. We always put our patrons first because they put us first. Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 66, Male, Female, and Gender Bender, Sex, Your Bird, and You. 
Well, one of our patrons was asking, what are you doing with a feather coming loose there? <laughs> one of our patrons was asking about the, the difference in behavior. Come here, don't you go down there and mess with the camera. Was asking about the difference in behavior between males and females and parrots. That's an interesting <laughs> subject. You should try doing some research on that. And the reason I say it is you won't find much out there. There are some certain behaviors they have um, that are related to whether they're male or female, but there's a lot of crossover, okay? Um, and the reason we titled it, you know, male, female, and gender bender is you will find if females can't find mates, they will, you know, females will bond with females or at least they'll get involved in sexual activity together. Uh, the same with males. If they can't find a female, they're going to try to, uh, they're going to exhibit that behavior wherever, whether it be trying to exhibit with their human, uh, or whether they're going to exhibit it with another bird of the same sex. But I've seen it time and time again. Bob gets involved in that. You know, and you, you need to break it up when it happens, but there's a lot of misinformation on the internet, of course. You'll hear that, oh, the females are more cuddly. Anyone who knows Roman, uh, he's not in here right now, but anyone who knows Roman knows that he's the most cuddly bird in the world. He'll put his head up on your chest, and then he'll, he'll hug you and just get really tight against your body, and he'll say, love, 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 love. So... You can't tell just by the gender. Now, now females, when they're mating, they take the submissive position. And the male takes the superior position. But that's about the only place you're going to see a, a major difference in, in that behavior. Um, I'm going to go over just these little behavioral differences that you don't see very often. Uh, for example, if you have... If you're crazy enough to put a male and female together, what usually will happen is that the Definitely the female will stop paying attention to you and only pay attention to her mate. Uh, that's only if they become bonded. You will find a lot of misinformation on the internet talking about how all oh, the females are just so much more cuddly. But that's not always the case. I mean, Roman is the most cuddly bird we have. He'll get right up under your arm and want to hug you for hours. Uh, of course, you don't want to do that because if you get too close to a bird, you give it too much attention, and it becomes bonded to you, then they'll become territorial. So, male or female, they both can become territorial. Once they become mated, they're going to protect you. And uh, this is a bond that lasts for a lifetime. Bob, you're not going over there. No, you're not. Um, it's a bond that lasts for a lifetime. And so, male or female, they will protect you. So if you go out to the internet and you try to look up what's the difference between male and female um, behavior patterns, okay, in, in parrots, and you won't find much information. And the reason is these complex creatures, um, like us, can exhibit some widely differing behavior. Now Coco, when she came here, for instance, you see she's being pushy and she's making her little sound that she makes when she wants attention, okay? When she first came here, she was not like that at all. She was uh, pretty much afraid of her own shadow, weren't you, Amy? She, mainly because, although she'd been taken care of well by the two people who had cared for her since she was a year old, um, she hadn't been around other birds. So being in a big flock like this was strange to her. So... Once she settled in and she started to, to find her own place, now she'll push for attention. So right now we've got Coco up here pushing for attention. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening in every day, special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries.
It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures. Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild, special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peach's happy face. We've got this little one just feeling comfortable on my chest. Lucy is a new resident. And she's just getting used to things. She's had... Whoops, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I was trying to fix that. No, you got a problem with that feather, don't you? Oh, well. Okay, I'll leave it alone for now. We'll get it later, okay? Okay? Okay, baby. So Coco, when she came here, she was quiet and not pushy at all. Now she pushes for what she wants. So a lot of people will say the pushy ones are the males. Well, let's see what happens if I stop petting her. You can see what pushy is, okay? This is a female, and we're told how cuddly they are and how they're more submissive. And let's see what happens here. What's going to happen? There she goes. She's trying to get my attention. Yeah? You want to be petted? Is that what you want? So here's an example of a female. And, and this is a thing, too. If you have somebody come in and they're, they've been around birds their whole lives, even an expert on them, they can't tell one from the other except with umbrellas you can tell by the color of the eyes the lighter eyes of the females but um, just with a quick glance not being able to see the color of the eyes you can't tell the difference now one slight difference is she turned her tail out towards me generally a male won't do that okay what males will do when they're trying to initiate a response from you is they will vocalize they will take their beak and either rub it against you gently or slam it against you, okay? Um, that's a behavior you'll see in males that you don't see in females. Uh, males will flare their tail out. So if you see that tail fanning out, that means they're, they're becoming sexually uh, stimulated, so you need to back off because um, you don't want these birds mated to you. I have three birds mated to me. Bam on the floor. Bob, leave her alone. Leave her alone. She's all right. She does this every time we have a video. Bob, leave her alone. Baba Lou. You don't need to be the room monitor. She'll figure it out. What you doing down there? Come on. Well, come here. Pippa, come here. That was a pretty good flight, though. You did hurry. Come here, Pippa. Come here, Pip. Come here, Pippa. Pippa, come here. Pip. Ah, oh, horse manure. <clears throat> Pip, you can't be on the floor now. Man. No, because you want to see the wall, and we're not going to do that. Bob, back up. Thank you. Don't get underneath me now. Well, come up here then. Come up here then. So, you'll see that difference. Um, both Coco. Both males and females will clack their beak at you if they're a little excited, okay? Um, if a female starts vibrating its tongue or starts shaking its body, 
it's overstimulated and you you know you need to uh, back off so again if you're looking on the internet for information about the difference between males and females Bob no Bob get over here now I see what you're doing now no you're not gonna go over there um, most of the information you're gonna find is gonna be anecdotal it's it's going to be what people have seen from living with the, with birds and of course they've lived with a num limited number of birds uh, if you were actually able to look at all the parrots in the world and watch them come here, you're going to behave or I will take you out of the room. I cannot keep trying to keep you from going over to the cameras. Okay? So stop. So most of what you're going to find on the internet is going to be what people have from personal experience. And it's so wide that you, you can't tell that way. Um, now, with some species, Male or female be maybe more active or more territorial, uh, from species to species. For example, with with the triton like Bob, you will see some difference. Um, or a triton like this one here, the Pippa, which comes from the name Philippa, which means good with horses. So I keep asking her, "Are you good with horses?" And all she says is, "Right." Yeah, see, that's all she says about it. She says, I guess that means you're good with horses. Just, I don't know. What's a horse? What's a horse? Well, it's your name, kid. You need to let go of my hand. She has an incredible grip. Eh. Don't you, girl. Don't you, girl. This is what happens when a bird swallows lead and they have to surgically remove it. It's just not just a little tainted. Of course, we only take in the ones that are really damaged, so... If you put an animal in an unnatural situation, okay, you're going to have to expect some unnatural behavior. So if you've got just females in a room, then you can expect some unnatural behavior. Either they're going to be paying too much attention to you or to another bird. Um, they do have instinct. They do have some behaviors that kind of come with them. I mean, they're vocalizations. They're just the... The basic urge to vocalize and the loudness of their vocalizations. Um, in most cases, what you're looking at is with behavior is a conditioned behavior. In other words, they've been trained that the steps that they've gone through in their life have produced the behavior that you see. Some things are built in, like the vibrating the tongue or vibrating the body when they become overstimulated or flaring the tail if it's a male. <clears throat> but you can have a bird that's cuddly, that's a male. The genes do pass on some predilections for particular behaviors, but <clears throat> a lot of it is just learned. So that, that brings up the whole myth of the best kind of birds to get are the hand-raised ones, which really isn't true. Uh, <clears throat> birds... These parrots do much better if they're raised by their parents and handled by a human for 20 minutes a day. So, in a large aviary with a mother and father, uh, around their sisters and brothers in a flock, and being handled every day by humans, they just do great. They don't do so well otherwise, so you're going to see some unnatural behaviors. Now, male or female, they're going to form a strong bond. If they bond with a parrot or a human, um, in the wild, they'll spend almost every minute of their lives together. Um, unless, of course, the female is sitting on eggs. The male will bring the female food, but at the same time, males will also, will also sit on the eggs. So, um, they will groom each other, they will nest together, they will protect their territory, and raise their young all together. Now, if they're in the wild and they're bonded, they have little use for the other birds in their territory, okay? So, you'll find that at home, too. If I've had people tell me, well, my, my bird just absolutely hates my husband. Well, that's not really true. What happened was your bird became bonded to you and is protecting you. It's become territorial. That could be male or female. You get the same kind of behavior. 
Um, a female will protect you like a male will. Um, remember, in the wild, they take care of everything together. They're like a family unit where the roles can be played by either. So the male will feed their young, the male will take care of the young, the female will do the same thing. What we see different in our homes is if you have a female who becomes bonded with a male bird, then you're going to have a, a female that generally isn't going to pay any attention to anything else. Males are a little different than that. Males will quite often, for example, Snowball when he was bonded to Chloe, he would play and get involved with other birds and play with me, but Chloe wouldn't. Chloe was mated and she was protecting her nest and that's all she wanted to do. So in the wild, um, as it would be in your home, they might socialize with other parrots and you know share the share trees together and they're flying around and feeding together and that kind of thing. But when it comes to uh, that bond, it's the thing that ties them. It's what matters above all other things. Which is one of the reasons you want to make sure you only pet your bird on the head, not anywhere else. And not when I say that, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I have birds here, such as Peaches, which I have to preen her because she has, she has six fused vertebrae in her neck and she can't preen her own tail. She's had, uh, she's had infected feather follicles. Um, so I have to spend a lot of time just preening her tail section. That will get you bonded to a bird quickly. Um, usually, well, in the beginning, whenever I said sugar, I say sugar, sugar, sugar. Yeah, she does. She doesn't do that much anymore. She used to immediately cry out as soon as I said the name sugar, uh, because she's bonded to me, and the idea that I would talk to another bird that was female of her species. Um, that set her off. Now she's okay with it. I'm also bonded to Sugar, and the reason I'm bonded to her is because she was a mess when we, she came here. She was all chewed up, and she had no feathers on her chest, and she almost died from blood loss three times when she chewed her feathers all off. Um, but I fought for two and a half years, and she's fine now. She does really well. Don't you, Sugar? You're ignoring me, sugar. Sugar. Pretty girl. Just gonna ignore me, okay. Now, male or female, they have the same instincts that their wild counterparts do. Of course, these are still wild animals. They're tame, but wild. You need to get off my hand. I need to use my hands occasionally. You need to let go of my hand. Thank you. You can sit right there, but don't climb on my hand, okay? Whoops. Did you get me? You, whoops, I'm sorry. Usually you don't do that. It's okay, don't panic. She's not gonna hurt you, don't panic. You're okay, you're okay. Yeah, you're all right. So, male or female, you, you're gonna find that it's Male or female, you need to be careful not to bond with your bird because once they become, these wild animals become bonded, get out of there, get over here, become bonded to you, then they will start to defend you just as they would their own mates in the wild. And that may not seem like much, but, uh, you know, these, these guys have beaks that are powerful enough to crush a walnut, so, and in fact, this little one right here, she loves opening walnuts, don't you? That's one of your favorite things to do, to open a walnut. What are you doing up there, Cecil? You're awful quiet. Awful quiet, Cecil. Now, this is especially true of females, but can apply to males, too. If you have a parrot that's bonded to someone in the house, it may, choose, it may single out one person to uh, dole out aggression to, um, because what's happening is that person is invading its territory. Um, 
So this can this can cause like bite, you know. This can cause frequent biting or uh, screaming or threatening motions. It can cause anything like that. So. Hey, Bob, try, don't push her now. Now, it's best if, if all family members spend an equal amount of time with any companion <laughs> parrot. This will help to, to dissuade the bird from forming a... <laughs> Hi, Coco. From forming a, a permanent bond with one individual, which you don't want. Now, this is an example. Does this whole motion, coming over and demanding my attention like that, most people would think, She's a, a male, but Coco is, she's a female female, aren't you? You know, you don't have to attack him. He's just playing. Sit right up here. Sit right there. There you go. Yes. Yes. Now, this doesn't look cuddly, does it? This looks more like demanding. So people would say that's what you'd expect from a male. But actually, you know, she, this female acts just like that, don't you, baby? Don't you, cutie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want your attention, I know. Now, since out in the wild, they live in flocks and, and socialize with each other all the time. That's one of the reasons people can become so attracted to these guys. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean when, you're, when people are going out for the first time to look for one. Generally, they have no clue uh, what they're like. They just think they're pretty and they'll probably talk. That's, that's what they're thinking. Not all these guys choose to talk. Um, but since they're too adapted to that, being in a flock in the wild, it, it makes them want to be part of the group they're in. So that's one reason why it can be a big problem with people giving them the improper attention. Now, I'm trying to pet her just on the head which is what I generally do. Pet this little one on the head, right, baby? Yeah. Now she's being cuddly. Now she's being cuddly. So the behavior most people would think, aggressive, um, the behavior you would expect to see from a male, you're seeing from a female right here. Right, Coco? So in the wild, they're, you know, they're perching in trees together, they're um, looking for danger all the time, they're checking for food that's around, and um, they're looking for places to take a bath or to relax, uh, take a nap. In this community, that, that causes a great need to be able to communicate. So they communicate with vocalizations. Uh, there are lots of different sounds that parrots make. Some of them uh, tend to make this other sounds of nature, like these guys who talk. Bob says Babalu. He says a lot of things, but he does say Babalu. He says good morning, don't you, Bob? He says Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. He says make it stop. It is ignorance of Bob's nature that turned Babalu into a living gargoyle. Bob's would-be parents made a hasty choice and found themselves in living hell, torn between guilt and frustration. I have seen the joy in Babalu's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Babalu love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But, once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. My heart nearly broke the day. I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries, and eventually, Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. 
his surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> But, so they vocalize. When they're closer together, they don't have to be that close because their eyes are so good, but they use their feather position to indicate... Uh, yes, Bob, I heard that laugh. They use that feather position, the feather position on their body to indicate certain things, such as the feathers just on the back of the neck up. That's, that usually means territorial aggression. All right, so you see those feathers come out, up. In uh, old world parrots, you'll see the eyes pinning. That means excitement. Um, with the newer world, new world parrots like Coco, she'll raise her crest. She's a cockatoo, so she'll raise her crest to indicate excitement. Um, by itself, it doesn't tell you if that's positive or negative excitement, but it tells you that they're excited. Right? I heard that. Teach. Now, since they do, and they're in, they live in the jungle, there's uh, you know a lot of trees around and a lot of things that can block sound, so their voices are loud to be able to go around that. And males and females can be just as loud. Now, both male and females will do displays. Um, it's a little different. Most females will put their wings out and bow forward. <laughs> Males tend to stick their chest out and flap their wings like this. So the females will go forward and raise their wings, uh, lean forward. The males tend to go back. That's not always true in every species, and that's not true from bird to bird. Some birds will do it differently. So one of the things that you should take from this is don't expect a male or female to behave in particular ways, okay? That has a lot to do with the way they were brought up. And since none of these animals was raised properly by its parents and lived in a flock, there's a wide variety of behavior that, that I see. Now, they use their visual displays, both male and female. They will, they will for example, lean forward, let the feathers on the back of the num neck come up, okay, open their beaks, and that's the sign of, like, back off, okay? Uh, sometimes it's just the feathers on the back of the neck. Sometimes they'll move forward with their beak a little bit to tell you to go away. Or Coco is really good at it. Coco will just grab your finger and pull it, pull it away. She doesn't want you there. Okay? But they will use displays to let you know what's going on. Um, these displays are also, they're used in courtship so they can form a, a mate bond that they will have for life, as long as they both live. And um, they'll also, the, the female, she can communicate when it's the right time for breeding. Now it's funny, uh, like Peach. Now here's a female, Peaches is a female, but she has come over to me and approached me just like a male, getting on top of my hand and acting like she's a, a male trying to breed. And again, that's because I'm her mate. I haven't approached her, so eventually she just approaches me. It's a type of uh, extinction burst. Hey, you don't do that. Get over here. I'll give you another piece of wood. You chew all up, Bob? You want another one? Okay. Now, in the wild, um, most of the time, the urge to reproduce is turned off. And the reason is most of these birds clutch two eggs for the year, and that's it. Okay, so they have a short breeding season, and it's over. Um, in captivity, if you want to get over there, I'll help. Is that what you want? Well, I'll put you up there if you want. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. All right, you're going back over here because I'm not fighting that. No, nope, let go. Let go. <laughs> you have such a grip, kid. Such a grip. Poor thing. So, what happens in captivity is because of the high availability of food, uh, over, 
and they're getting petted too much, um, overstimulation, okay, that they don't get in the wild, and this results in the urge to mate. So we get normally around eight months of mating season in captivity. We're in the wild, you're talking just a short period of time, maybe a month or two, and it's all over. And unfortunately, overstimulating these birds uh, usually has some serious health concerns, both emotionally and physically. You know, high levels of hormonal activity in the body can cause problems with digestion, can cause problems with just the urge to eat, so they might lose weight. Um, emotionally, they may feel like you know they're not getting what they need out of the world they're in. So. Now they have a special advantage over most other animals you know, in that they're, they're permanent pair bond um, because they can spend all of their time hatching and rearing young instead of uh, having to look for a new mate every year. Okay, So there are good reasons for this to have evolved over time. Now they don't have to do any elaborate courtship rituals or anything like that in the wild. They have their bonded mates, so all they have to do is indicate that they're ready and that kind of thing. So, But in captivity, uh, they're never quite sure where they stand. Um, they haven't been raised by their parents, so they don't know where they stand. So it all becomes questionable, right? Um, the other thing, too, is in the wild, food supply is not something... I mean, there's food, but they have to go and hunt it down, and you know, there's a whole bunch of work involved in getting the food. Where in captivity, the food is just there. So um, you're going to see more of the vibration from the females, uh, them turning tail towards you. You're going to see the males coming up and trying to like knock on the door. They're, you know, if they could, they'd probably walk up and say, hey, let's take it. Are you ready to go to the bar? Except these guys can't have alcohol, of course. If there's plenty of food around and they're getting getting attention, then there's always that possibility that you're going to form a mate bond and that could be a problem for you. Male and females both do this as the head bowing. They'll put their head down. That means preen. Let's preen. Uh, if you start to see that happening more frequently, it may mean that your bird is trying to breed. Um, it could be a sign of courtship if it's happening all the time so keep that in mind now during the breeding season the physical contact between birds intensifies so what so what happens is they start spending more and more time touching each other um, not the social preening where they're going around just preening each other's heads but where bonded mates are actually spending a lot of time preening each other, being close to each other. This is something too in our in captivity, keep in mind that if you're giving them too much attention, now they need to be petted every day, okay? And just don't spend 10 minutes sitting there petting them. Pet them for a minute or two, get involved in something else, let them play and then pet them a little bit more. Try not to give them these lengthy periods of petting. Male or female, it can be a problem. Now, if you get a female, for example, if you get a female too uh, too excited, like with peaches, she, she actually laid an egg, which for Saram cockatoos, called, commonly called Moluccans in the United States, this is unusual, okay? They don't generally do that in captivity, the Saram cockatoos, but because I had to preen her tail and I had to work with her to get, you know, we're talking about taking her to the vet, getting, getting uh, impacted feather follicles cared for, and you know, thousands of dollars of surgery and that kind of thing. Bob, um, she got a lot of handling during one period of time, and what happened was she laid an egg. Now, where this can be a, a problem is if. We don't know exactly what they're supposed to eat. We have good pellets like Harrison's, and we can give them fruits and veggies and that kind of thing, more on the veggies than the fruits, to try to supplement that. But we don't know that they're getting everything they need. So if you stress a bird, 
getting it so, you stress a female so much, and she begins laying too many eggs, then this can impact your health. She might get a, an egg that becomes stuck in the tract, okay? Um, that's, that's really dangerous. They may get an egg that breaks inside because the shell is the last thing to form on an egg. So if something happens, you know, if they don't have enough calcium, then the egg's going to be weak and it'll break inside. That's not too tough to deal with. Basically, it gets massaged out by the vet. If you've got an egg that's impacted in there and they have to go in and pull it out, that's a little more complicated and invasive. Now, some species of parrots uh, will do courtship feeding, okay? So what they'll do is they'll go to their mate and they'll feed them some food to, to start the breeding cycle. So be careful how you feed your bird food. It's better if you eat it on their own. It's also better if you've got enough people in the house that you can feed them in the morning, feed them at night, and not leave food out all day. It's less likely that you'll see sexual behaviors. Now another problem that people have with their birds is that the, they'll be they'll they'll, use, they'll have empathy instead of compassion, and empathy is where you feel bad because Bob really wants peanut butter. Oh, he likes peanut butter. He, oh, he's just got to have it. Well, knowing what it'll do to his prolapse because you know you got to I've got to clean him five or six times a day because he's. You know, he's had a prolapse and he's got, this is his second set of stitches and he's, he's on the road to that big surgery that's going to, that'll be his last surgery. Uh, he'll get three years out of that probably. Now, when it comes to making a nest and having a nest, these guys, they nest in, in the cavities of trees, okay? And that's where they go, the hollows of trees. So if they have places like boxes they can get into and they treat that as a as a, a nest it's not so bad if they're not in the mood to breed i say mood but it actually has to do with hormones we can't see their hormones we can't see inside with some kind of machine on our eyes you know, that goes on the floor again come here pippa come here girl no she's on the floor again come here I got to go get her. I got to go get her. Come on. I got to go get her. Come on. I got to get her. Can't leave her on the floor. Come on, Peppa. Good day, Tony. Come here. Leave her alone, Bob. Leave her alone, Bob. Peppa. Oh, that feels good. It's hot in here. You can flap all you want. Bob, leave her alone. No. No. No, you're not going to do that either. Mm -mm. You're going to leave her tail section alone. I can see where you're looking. No, not doing that. So if they've got, if they have a place to nest and they start to get too attached to it, you may have to take it away from them. A lot of people say don't give them bo nest boxes or boxes to sit in. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, it depends on the circumstances. Uh, if a bird's just becoming bound to the box and it's not coming out, that's a problem, so I would take it away. But um, it's not bad if they get into a box occasionally and do a little nesting. It's a natural behavior. Male and female will both do it. They will both be involved in, in the box thing, so, in, in, in trying to nest. So Now, when it comes to defending their nest and territory, a male or female can be just as... Uh, adamant in defending their nest. Uh, when Simone was here, she was talking to a bird that weighs 420 grams, she used to take salamander and literally chase him around the room and I'd have to go and have to grab her and take her out of the situation. And he would run away from her because she was defending her territory and he didn't consider where he was his territory, obviously, or he would have defended it. So he ran away which is what they do when they confront a situation where they've gotten to someone else's territory. They just leave. Now, one of the things, too, is that people tend to uh, to hear when they look, look on the Internet. What are you doing? What are you doing? Here you go, sweetheart. When they look on the Internet, they'll, they'll, think, they'll see things like you should, you know, make sure your bird knows who's boss and, you know, that they know their place. Um... There's no dominance in parrots, and they don't take well to being forced to do things. 
So we use a type of training called operative conditioning. It's called applied behavior analysis. But basically what it is is you're getting them to do certain behaviors on their own based by cues you give them, okay? For example, I could probably get someone to do something by simply saying, well, would you mind taking out the trash? And if you do, I'll give you this candy bar. You know, um, it kind of works like that. And male or female, neither one reacts well to being forced to do things. Uh, there is no pecking order among parrots, so they don't, they don't see anybody as boss. And if you try to be boss, you're probably going to make your, your bird more aggressive. Uh, it's not going it's just going to be defending itself. You'll see it as aggression, but actually they're just going to be defending themselves. You don't want to try to dominate your bird, whether it be male or female. Some, sometimes if you've got a big bird like salamander, people will think, well, I've got to show him who's, who's boss, and it just doesn't work, okay? It will make them more aggressive. And when you're dealing with males, that's usually a bigger issue. Uh, but it, again, it's the way they were brought up. So, it, for example, let's say if you've got a bird that you're raising and the bird starts opening its beak and lunging forward. Well, if you back your hand off, you're teaching the bird that lunging will make a person back away. So, they will lunge to protect their territory and back you off. Again, you can see how that's a learned behavior. Um, so, territorial aggression is, is, is common among parrots. There's no dominance, but there is territorial aggression. And both will fight to protect their nests. So you may not see it as a nest. To you, it may just be an old box that you got your soy milk in sitting on the floor. But to them, it's different. So maybe one of your friends comes over, oh, your bird is so cute, leans down, gets close to that nest, and then there is aggression. It will come out in whatever way is necessary to make that person back off, but it will be what they've learned from the past, okay? Whatever they've learned in the past that worked is what they're going to use. Well, pretty much the same with you. If you learned that putting money in a Coke machine, you put a dollar in a Coke machine and you get a Coke, you've learned that. So when you want one, that's what you're going to do. It's the same for them. So once they see you as a mated partner, a sexual partner, they see that as a four-life bond. Um, they will protect you. And it's the same if you let two birds bond. I've, I've had people tell me, well, I got one. There was one man who told me a story, and I was so upset when I heard this. He had a yellow-crowned Amazon. And he thought, well, my bird looks really sad. I'm not around that much, so I'll get him a, a partner. So he got his male Amazon a female. And after that, they never paid any attention to him again. So then he got rid of the birds. Okay, he created the problem by bringing in a female. And they accepted each other, so they became bonded. And then they didn't want anything to do with him at all. Now understand these guys, okay? All right. Right, little girl? Now, you notice they're pretty quiet in here today. It's because it's later. It's 90 degrees outside, and I'm trying to do this towards the end of the day. Um, and in order for the temperature outside to have dropped a little bit, it's probably like 85 now instead of 90. But um, I had to turn the air conditioner on a couple of times and stop. Uh, ah! You need to let go. No. You are not going to grab my... Shirt, sure. let go. Bob. That's okay. She's not hurting me. You don't need to defend me. It's okay. What'd you say, Peach? Say it loud. Say it proud. There you go. Good girl, Peach. Say it loud and say it proud. Hello. Hello. There's a female display for you. Okay. That's the way a female will display. If I could get Cecil over here, I could show a male display. Cecil, why don't you come over here? Why are you sitting on my head? What are you doing? You're gonna, now you can't get too close to her. She'll get upset. She'll get upset. Come here. She'll get upset.
Don't get upset. Leave her alone, please. Thank you. Just leave her alone. I know she's your ah! Very good, Peaches. Very good. female they both can learn aggression so if if they learn that by nipping you they can get what they want then they're going to do it, it it's they're not don't take it personally okay male or female don't take that personally um, That can happen too if, say, a, f a female is coming up trying to get you interested. You know, it's that time of the year and they're trying to get you interested and you're not showing any interest. They may nip at you, so be aware of that. With a male, it's, it, again, it's a learned thing, but quite frequently they will come up and whack you with their beaks or, um, or be, take their beak and go up and down your finger with it or up and down your arm to try to get your attention. The main thing is to remember to pet them on the head, unless you know what you're doing and you have a situation where it's a, you, know, you can go around the rules. Um, the rules are there as general guidelines. Some of they say in, in, the, in the Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, that's more a guideline, you know, than a set of rules. But it should be a set of rules until you've learned what's necessary in order to make... <laughs> Until you're skilled, it should be a set of rules until you're skilled enough to know how to get around those rules. I remember one such case where uh, a lady I met who had a um, military macaw. <clears throat> she had a military macaw and it would run over to bite her feet. And she would immediately grab its beak and shake its beak up and down and scream at it. That's what the bird wanted, of course, and she knew that. But she thought that she had trained the bird not to bite her feet by playing the game when actually the bird had taught her that if it ran over like it was going to bite its feet, then they would play the game. So um, it was a mutual thing, but I think the bird had a little more on that than she you know, the bird had a little more influence than the lady did. Right, Peach? Come on. Now, this is a, a female displaying because she wants attention. Right, Peach? Now, there's that. I hope the camera picks that up. But she's running her beak on my thumb. Okay. There's that hunching down and vibrating a little bit. So, you got to be careful. I can't pet her too much. I'm going to give her a little attention to know I actually see her. There she goes with the, she's running her beak along my finger. So she's a little too, little too sensitized right now. Now Bob, I don't know if I can get Bob to do it. Not that I want him to, but Baba Lou, what you doing Baba Lou? Hi Baba Lou, Baba Lou. What's up Baba Lou? Baba Lou, Baba Lou. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good boy. Okay, see how he, he took his beak and he kind of ran it all across my stomach? That's the beginning of a male starting to show its interest. And you can see how similar it is, right? The male will be a little bit more pushy about it because they're the one that usually initiates. But... I've seen it the other way with her coming up and actually climbing on my hand. While there are some differences between male and female, it's actually the way they were brought up, the things they learned as they were growing up, that make the big, biggest differences in their behavior. Um, as you saw with Coco, she's very forthright and pushy when she wants to be, where uh, people think that all the females are so docile. Uh, Peaches isn't all that docile, are you, Peach? Yeah, she says, I'm not. I'm not. She can be pushy when she wants. This is a female up here being pushy, aren't you? 
aren't you? Bob, look, when Bob had a hold of my little finger, there's a sign. Yes, they will tend to grab your finger. Grab onto something. Right, won't they? So, to summarize, there, there's a few differences in the way that males and females act. But most of, that is their, most of their behavior is based on uh, what they learned as they were growing and what they learned as things go along. All of them are attentive to their mates. Females in a, real, in a bonded relationship will often not pay attention to others. Uh, both male and female will defend their mate. So if you manage to get your bird bonded to you, you may think it's cute, but you won't think it's cute when your bird goes after a neighbor child or uh, attacks your wife or husband. And that'll be not the bird's fault. It won't be the bird's fault. And Keep in mind though, if, if you learn reward training, you can work around that and um, you can't stop the bond, but you can open up the social situation so they won't defend their territory as much. But most importantly, no matter what sex your bird is, you should observe their behavior in order to see what kind of enrichment they need and become alert to their wants and needs, right? Pippa, you want to say goodbye to the people? Pippa? <laughs> That's all, folks. We'll see you next time. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org. Reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the aura of a flower.